imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. You're in your tent and at night you hear noises and commotion and voices coming from outside. So you leave your tent, you come outside and you see people leaving the camp of Abu Abdullah in the hundreds and thousands. Looking around confused, for a split second your eyes fall into the eyes of Abu Abdullah There and then you, Jawad, decide you're going to stay. Knowing when the morning comes what's going to happen to you. So the morning comes, now it's the day of Ashura. You walk up to the Imam to offer yourself to him, offer your service to him. And he lets you pick what you want to do. What would you want to do on that day? Oh, I will sacrifice myself to him. I will do everything that I can do to help him out like in the day of Ashura. Like help, help, him, help him here. How would you help him? Would you, for example, go and get water with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salam? Would you want to go and fight against the enemy? Would you protect the tents of the women and children? Would you help the wounded? Would you keep the small children busy so they forget about the thirst or their family members being killed on the battlefield? I would say I will help Abu Fadl Abba, Abba, uh, Abbas to help him bring the water to the kids. How would you help him? Because in that day he was alone by himself, no one was helping him. So if there's someone was like to help him, to, to help him, to tell him like there's someone behind you, he may care like he, he may be like be safe and give him the water. Why have you picked him? Out of all of the scenarios, you could have gone to help Ali Al Akbar alayhi salam. You could have helped Qasim alayhi salam. You could have helped. Because for he, he was holding the raya of Imam Hussein. So if he sit down, that means like the, the war is finished and they won. And I was like, I want to leave him like be holding it for as long as he can. So yeah, that was I picked him. Now imagine. You've gone to college, you've had a long day at college, you're tired, you're hungry, you come home, you open the house door, you walk in, you see your family frantic, each of them running around in a different direction, your mum's washing fruit, your dad's trying to make food, your brothers are making tea and it looks to you like you have a visitor. A guest has come to your house. So you say to your dad, who's come to see us? And he says he hasn't come to see us. He's come to see you. Now you think to yourself, maybe it's a friend from mosque or a friend from college or a friend from down the street, maybe one of your neighbors. So you come to the living room, you open the door, you walk in. And you see sitting on the chair is Imam Hussain salam. In that moment, what would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? First of all, he will say that I am of Imam Mahdi army that will help him in the future. And then he told me that Jannah is your place in the you know, day, uh, day of judgment. What would you say to him? Um, anything like um, mercy of Allah, maybe like he took like rahma min Allah, like from God. That's all. Still, yeah. So now he's sat down, talked with you. You've spoken, and he gets up to leave your house. What do you do? Um, I will tell him to stay like forever, I want to see him forever. Why? Because he's on Hussein, like, say, uh, he is a master of Jannah, of, yeah.
At the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago. I asked you about a day that's already happened and gone. And I gave you, I said to you that you could have the choice of what you wanted to do. Now it might be easy to say, if I was there, I would do this. If I was there, I would stop this from happening. If I was there, I would try and help this person so he can do this rather than them dying, for example. A lot of us forget in this day and age, we have Imam al-Mahdi And in a way, him being physically absent from us, so him being far from us, is a way of him giving us a choice of how we want to serve him. Because he's not here in person to say, Jawad, pick this up, Jawad, go and do this for me, Jawad, help me with this. So you have a choice in how you want to help him. What do you think you've done for the 12th Imam? What do you think he deserves from you? Well, for, to be honest, he deserves everything that I can do, like pray, like, uh, dua, everything that I like. Um, like for example, we got Ziyarat to him, so everything we, like, we can do, like at the year, so yeah. How do you think he feels with you as his follower? Um, I, I'm not expecting anything really. Do you think he's happy with you? He's upset with you? No, I think he's happy with me. Yeah. What makes you say that? Because um, I always like read the art. I know like I read Quran as well. And, yeah. and I go to Majalis so, so yeah a lot. What do you think the most important thing is that we can do to become closer to him? Just like keep focusing on our religion, prayers and that stuff like that, yeah. And dua as well. What's your favourite dua? For me it's dua kumin. Why dua kumin? Because I don't know, when I pray, like when I read it or yeah, I feel different. What's your favourite line in dua kumin? Why those lines in particular? Because Allah is like merciful, so when I always just say that to him, so I don't feel, I don't feel like good. I feel that something gone, like something bad come from me. Ain't a baggy at so long. Ain't a baggy at so long. Ain't a baggy at so long. I don't care as a hoday. Hoday, Oh